What part of LeBron will never be the GOAT, don't you guys understand? LeBron had his chance. He had a slim chance. I mean, no, he had a realistic chance, but it was still an uphill battle. Even with the stats, even with LeBron's resume right now, there's still a Hall of Fame gap of a resume between Michael Jordan and LeBron James. Like, the gap is so wide that you can create a third Hall of Fame resume between the two guys. That's how much of a gap Jordan has over LeBron, despite the fact that LeBron has been playing and has played a lot longer than Michael Jordan. So that right there alone lets you know that LeBron James is not go- can never be the GOAT. He's not even in the discussion for GOAT status, okay? That's one. Number two, LeBron in 2011, okay, in 2011, LeBron lost his chance. And in some cases, you could say in 2010 when he decided to team up in free agency with Wade and Bosch that he lost his chance. But we're not going to go there, right? But some, some people can say that. I like to go to 2011 with the finals. That's my starting point where I say, okay, LeBron is not the GOAT. Now, I'm not going to say that if LeBron, if 2011 didn't happen, would he still be in the conversation? And I probably would say no still, but I think it would have been a lot. It would have been much, it would have been a much more of a chance. Right? It would have been. Because if LeBron, Wade, and Bosch would have dominated the decade one, like, five six seven eight titles despite the fact they said well they did team up it's still hard to win that many titles right it's still hard it's still pretty impressive it's still hard to do um regardless so if he would have won we would have to give him the credit it's okay he won all those titles yeah you teamed up with a former finals mvp in your prime but winning all those titles is still pretty impressive especially if you do like a bunch in a row the thing with Michael Jordan's six titles is that, which is kind of the reason why Tim Duncan is not in the GOAT conversation or even in the top five discussion, because Duncan doesn't have any three-peats, very consistent player, long-term, but Duncan gets knocked a little bit because he doesn't have back-to-backs, uh, he doesn't have, and he should get penalized, but he, he definitely should and the reason why he should. I think he has one back-to-back maybe. Does he have one? No, six. No, he doesn't have any back-to-backs. And the reason why Duncan should get penalized for this. See, because he should have had back-to-backs. Especially in that era. And Because if we call him the era weak. Because me, personally, I'm calling this era very weak. I think mostly everything after like 2001, 2002-ish. Probably after 2000. I would go far back to say that after Jordan retired, the league got extremely watered down and weak. From a basketball standpoint, rules got changed to allow guys to be better offensively. Defense essentially went away for almost every team in the league, except for like a handful. But then the rules even got worse. So, but during that stretch, which is peak Tim Duncan time with San Antonio winning 50 plus games every year, they still never won. They never had a three-peat and then back-to-back. So, by that alone, Duncan does take a knock. He's still all-time great. Probably arguably the best power forward in league history because he's been more successful than every other power forward. But when we talk about all-time great, think about it. Duncan would have had one three-P during that stretch. He probably is in the top five all-time easily if he has one three-P. Even if he has a couple back-to-backs, say if he won two back-to-backs during that stretch, he probably, we probably look at him a lot differently, even better than he is now right so those things matter and LeBron doesn't have any of that on his resume he doesn't have that he has a bunch of bounce arounds now he gets a little bit of credit now after the 2011 stuff he took, his stock fell down it's about all time great stock not great player but GOAT stock like this when guys you get stock as a GOAT over time in the NBA right there's a certain period of time you're like okay this guy could be in the discussion for the GOAT LeBron had high stock and goatness when he came to the league because people thought, oh, this guy's different. He's going to be the next MJ, next Magic. He is going to be, if anybody can catch Michael, is LeBron, right? This is what people were saying when he was 18 years old. So at the highest point of his peak, at the high, his stock value, his goat stock 
was at the highest point when he was when he got into the league. The chosen one, the king, blah blah blah. That stock started to drop in 2011. It's dropped. It went so far down. Now, it dropped, and if you bought into it, you, you probably got goat stock at a good price because now he's back. His stock has ru- risen again. It rose even more when he went back to Cleveland and won a title. Right? He brought Cleveland back to the title. But while that's impressive and all, the era is weak. The Eastern Conference is weak. That's why he went to the finals like every year. Eastern Conference Finals, NBA Finals, every single year in the East. Because the, the, the East was trash. It's been trash for like twenty, like two decades. It's starting to pick up a little bit now again. Like coincidentally, it picked up a bit after he left the conference. <laughs> but it's still, I mean, it was a trash era. For most of his time in the NBA, the Eastern Conference has been completely garbage. That's why he was able to make these runs by himself or with a second guy or with guys injured. Despite the fact that he recruited half of the league. That's another thing. Negative on his all-time GOAT resume. The guy recruited. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with wanting to play with the best guys. Right? You can pay millions of dollars to play basketball to win. Of course you want to play on the best team. So, I don't want this to be uh, confused with me having a problem with him recruiting. No. Because if you go out to the ball- ballpark and go into somebody, go out to West Ball, or go to any of these street ball tournaments, guys are picking teams and picking the best guys. Everybody does it. So I'm not I'm not knocking him for wanting to do that. My thing is, you cannot compare yourself to the GOAT, a guy who never recruited and still won. You had to recruit. We don't know if you can win without recruiting. We know you got a pipeline into the whole NBA. You got a talent agency. You got a talent agency. Did I say that? Well, he's basically running a talent agency. But he has like his own agency. He has pipeline into players. So... This guy has to pick it up of the litter of who he wants to put on his team. And teams have to do it if they want to keep LeBron happy. And he's put a lot of organizations through hell with his demands and his recruiting and then leaving. And then teams have to start over, but they can't because they got all these contracts. So that goes against him. That's another check mark in the not GOAT category. Now, when he beat Golden State, my thing is everyone is hyping that up as oh my god he beat the 73 and 9 warriors this is amazing in my opinion 73 and 9 warriors are one of the most overrated teams very overrated team um that's why they're not even the same page as the 72 bulls or the 80 i think 85 or 86 celtics not on that line i think both of those teams are better than the warriors and i can make the argument if the war uh the spurs from top to bottom in my opinion if uh, a healthy Spurs team that won 67 games is probably better than Golden State. Same year. Mind you, remember the Spurs won 67 games, and I think Duncan, Ginobili, Park, all these guys missing games. They played like 20, 30 games, and they still won 67 games with Lamarcus Aldridge and Kawhi Leonard as two top guys. But I think a full, healthy Spurs team is probably better. That Spurs team is better than the Warriors, in my opinion. But all in all, the Spurs had no business winning 67 games. They did that because the NBA's watered down is weak. That's why. So that 73 win Warrior team overrated and they got exposed in the finals. They just did. You can't tell me that Draymond Green getting suspended took a team that out of it. Like, oh my God, like we lost it. We just couldn't win the title. Okay, blew a lead. Come on. Great teams don't blow leads like that you can't claim to be great and blow that you did and also you nearly blew it against the oklahoma city thunder you were up three down three one and you was able to come back but you probably thunder probably should have beat you which would have been an even more embarrassing loss because you were so damn oklahoma city thunder just knocked you out of the playoffs and you didn't even get to the finals hmm. so that would have been even more embarrassing but they survived that and that's on OKC for blowing it, so they take the hit. Durant takes a hit for that, legacy-wise. And while this, the Warriors were 73 and 9, like I said, they were overrated. And so LeBron, I mean, LeBron will get credit all time on the history list for beating a 73 and 9 team. He'll get the credit for that. But we have to put things in perspective and say, hey, you know, I don't think that team is a little overrated. And 
So while uh, he'll get a little bump, bump up in the stock for that, I'm not, he's still not going to be in a GOAT discussion. He has too many downs to be in the GOAT discussion. Okay? Now, a lot of people talk about MJ and 1 and 9 without Pippen. And the, the major knock on Michael Jordan, especially from the people playing today, is 1 and 9 without Pippen. That's like their major thing, right? But they act like Scottie Pippen came into the league as this prize possession. They, oh my God, this is a can't miss talent that the Bulls just got, and Pippen's going to come right in and, and be a superstar. That didn't happen. Matter of fact, Pippen. I would say, honestly, Pippen probably had a handful of great years. I'm talking about, like, years that you say, okay, this guy is a, is a star. I don't think he ever had a... I don't think I don't think Scottie Pippen was a superstar. I know some people like to put him in as a superstar, but I don't think he was ever a superstar. I think he was a very good star next to Michael. And I don't... And I really believe that Scottie Pippen would not have... Would not... Would not have been all-time hall of famer if he didn't play with michael jordan i believe that and there's a little bit of proof of that throughout pippen's career because when mike after they won the three p and michael jordan decided to not say, i'm not gonna say decided that was, that's the wrong choice of word when michael jordan left for whatever reason suspension whatever the story is retired dad died who knows whatever his deal was he left he left the bulls this is a team that just came off an nba title they went out they added a couple pieces now it's no mj so but this is a, if, if you're saying that jordan could win without pippen i would assume that scotty pippen could take this same bulls team and win a title because you you were trying to sell to me that scotty pippen was the reason pippen and phil jackson was the reason that jordan got his ring so even minus jordan added a few pieces alongside scotty pippen who's having a inflated mvp season because you know the nba and the narratives they wanted to make scotty the next guy they're desperate you know because they need to fill that void with mj gone so they overinflated scotty pippen's year all-star game mvp all that other stuff blah 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 it took one year before pippen imploded as the top guy one season crumbling with a championship roster to a second round exit to the knicks and then it gets worse because of and then him sitting on the bench because he's crying because he didn't get the last shot Come on. Even Phil Jackson knew that Scotty Pippen was not an alpha. He was not Michael. He would never be Michael. I don't care what Phil Jackson says today. I don't care what books he writes. He's selling books. I don't care what the people say today. The one thing you cannot change is facts and what happened. History doesn't change because people are giving interviews now and saying, oh, yeah, I believe Scotty was the best thing and he was the next Michael. He was just as good. Like, let's stop the bullshit, people. Stop the cow. Stop the bull. Because in real time, we saw Scotty Pippen. We saw it. We saw Pippen. Only can handle this Bulls team, this Bulls franchise, for one season. That's it. That's why he was able to handle it. And this is after Pippen has developed into the player he became, right? He sat on the bench the first couple of years, you know, watching MJ, you know, learning from Michael, I'm assuming, becoming a solid defender, a really good defender. And when the keys of the franchise were handed over to Scotty temporarily, he couldn't handle it for more than one year. This is not a guy, this doesn't sound like a guy who was the reason why Michael won and, and Pippen was so great. We're talking about 93, 94, Pippen. At this point, you're about what, six, seven years in, right? You should already be established. You should be ready to be the guy. You should have made the Bulls so good that they would have forgot about Michael what happens in year two the Bulls struggle they barely get to the playoffs they was almost in, they were in danger of missing the playoffs matter of fact I believe the second season that Scotty had the team by himself the year that Jordan came back at the end of the year I think it was like 17 games left I believe that at the all-star break the Bulls were under 500 or right around there they were mediocre and the second year of Scotty Pippen's MVP caliber season I think it was an MVP uh runner up or he was in their MVP running that first year when he took over and that's what all the jordan haters try to point to right they point out scotty's first year when jordan left but they fail to not mention his second year when as the team top guy they don't mention that they ignore that like you never hear anyone bring up scotty pippen's second season as the top guy in the chicago and how much they struggled 
and how Michael Jordan had to come out of retirement and nearly and save the Bulls' season. Now Jordan wasn't himself; they ended up losing to Orlando. But I really believe if Jordan didn't come back, the Bulls probably missed the playoffs, and it would have been. And I kind of wish Jordan did not come back because could you imagine Jordan not coming back? The Bulls are missing the playoffs flat out completely, and then Jordan coming back in ninety five, ninety six, and then. Uh, the Bulls winning the title and 72 wins. That would have crushed Scottie Pippen's legacy. And he probably would have got traded before that anyway. But who knows? Well, who knows? Maybe they don't win 72 because maybe they trade Pippen. They get some other pieces that don't link up. And then Jordan comes back. And then it's 96 probably doesn't even happen. I mean, I'm going to be realistic. We're not going to act like Jordan comes in and can play with everybody because we don't know what would happen. Then there was a lot of drama in the Bulls front office. But, um, so... Jordan comes back, you know, they lose in the playoffs. And then the following season, Jordan's back 23, Bulls win 72 games, and then it's history. So, the two years that Jordan left, I think that's the proof right there why Scottie Pippen would not have been able to handle being an alpha male. And that alone helps Michael Jordan. That puts a feather in Michael Jordan's cap when it comes to how great Michael was. But, the Jordan haters will try to tell you that, oh, this was more of a 50 50 and Pippen was a lot closer to Michael than you think. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He just wasn't, folks. And you can't rewrite history. You cannot rewrite the narrative. I don't care what the stats say. The stats are not even that great anyway, but still, they like to use stats a lot when they say, oh, look at Scotty's numbers. It was right there. He led the team in all these categories. <laughs> no, folks. I'm telling you right now. Scotty Pippen wasn't even close to Michael. And he exposed himself, I think, those two years. Let the world know. And let's talk about the second three P. Let's be real here. Scottie Pippen was not the same Pippen. Did he have good stretches? Yes. Right? He, he was a talented player. So, of course, he was able to play. He was able to be good. But I still think the first half of the three P was probably Scottie's best year. Telling off during the two years that Jordan left. I don't think the best Scottie... I think Scottie started to decline after his ego got destroyed after that first year without Michael. Think about it. This is a guy who was on top of the world. Won three peats. Jordan leaves. He's like, this is my chance to be the man. Won first year. MVP All-Star game. Leads the Bulls to the playoffs. He's living. He's feeling it. He's, he's high on this adrenaline that, oh, I'm the next guy. Phil Jackson probably gassed him up in practice. And then it comes to the playoffs. Oh, I'm going to draw up this final play for Tony Kukoc. Not you. You're not going to take the final shot. His ego got deflated. He got embarrassed. And it went downhill ever since. Scotty Pippen was a fragile guy. He was fragile. And he basically lost it mentally. And then the trade rumors and the Bulls want to get rid of him. And matter of fact, Jordan probably had more respect for Scotty than Phil or the ownership of the Bulls. Because Jordan is a ball player. He understands fit. He understands guys he's used to you know he understands that dynamic and he's like man i just won three with scotty i can win another three we, we keep him you know there's no reason to get rid of him because jordan understands that he's a basketball player he's a legend he's an all-time great excess and O's. he understands the dynamic of a scotty pippen defender on the wing pippen kind of like eh. i'm just saying this is the time with the bulls now he had a little bit more success with the portland trailblazers that year but he had talent he went to teams that had talent and had a little bit of success. Didn't win. Probably should have beat the Lakers in, I think, 2000. He probably should have won that series. But they lost. But this is Scottie Pippen again losing in a Game 7 in a playoff series with a deep roster. Now, it was Kobe and Shaq. They're going to be wrong. But I'm saying we just watched Kobe and Shaq get folded in 99. So it wasn't like... like it, Right now, it's easy to say that Kobe and Shaq was so dominant. The most dominant run, I think, was in 2001. But the Portland losing to the Lakers, that was a big deal to Scottie Pippen's legacy at the time. Now, it looks a little bit better now because Shaq and Kobe became Shaq and Kobe. But let's face the music. Portland losing in 2000 was a big, big dent. Again, losing in the playoffs without Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and prime of your career at your best with all this talent on, on your roster. So, we have to look at Scottie Pippen's career in totality and understand that while 
yes, Jordan's 1 and 9 without Pippen. A young Michael Jordan, inexperienced, great talent, getting beat by the Celtics, one of the greatest teams ever, losing to Detroit in the playoffs. He did win a playoff series with rookie Scottie Pippen on the bench. So, and I think over time, Jordan would have got, I think there's more evidence to show that Jordan would have won without Scotty at some point than the other way around. There's just evidence showing that. Just watch the progression of Michael Jordan over the years. I don't hold a lot of weight with one and nine without Jordan. I mean, without Pippen when Jordan's in like year one, two, and three. You kidding me? I mean, LeBron didn't even make the playoffs in the week east his first two years. Okay? So let so let's not even if you want to use that as the reason why uh, LeBron's better, and that's what you hear from a lot of LeBron fans. Oh, Jordan's won and not without Pippen. It's Jordan's first three years in the playoffs. First three years in the league. Will LeBron do his first three years in the league? Didn't even make the playoffs until I think year three. So that, that doesn't make any sense. But that's the argument you're going to hear from these uh, Jordan haters or LeBron fans or both. It's not about Scottie Pippen. Ain't no Pippen, ain't no, ain't even close to uh, Jordan's level. And the fact is that LeBron James has played with way more talented players, way more all-star players than Michael Jordan. And it's not even close. And the fact that LeBron still has a losing record in the finals and the big games tells you everything you need to know despite that he's playing in a weaker era. Now, you want to debate the errors? I guess you can have that debate, but in my opinion, I think that the errors are weaker. And then they're trying to nitpick Jordan's game. Oh, oh, oh Jordan only can fade away and he would beat DeMar DeRozan today and all this other stuff. Come on, man. I think there's a small sample of Michael Jordan as a wizard that showed that he can keep up with some of the top guys in the, in the league. Some of the top guys in the new era from an athletic standpoint despite the fact that he didn't have his athleticism anymore the same rate could you imagine Michael Jordan in 1988 Michael Jordan playing today with the athleticism and the ability to go to the hole against teams that got no shot blockers he was doing that against shot blockers in the 80s and 90s early 90s late 80s against teams that had shot blockers defenders guys that put you on your ass Today, he, today the lane is open. It's like the it's like the it's like the wide open sea. It's like the Atlantic Ocean today. Jordan will walk into the lane. He could probably play. Jordan played today. He would play easy twenty years today because he would never have. To, he would never get touched. You put nineteen eighty four Michael Jordan in today's game. Right now, coming out of the league in two thousand twenty three, he would easily play until twenty forty three because he'll never get hurt. Because he would glide into the lane. Glide in. No shot block. Who's going to stop him? Who's going to hand check him? Who's going to elbow check him? Nobody. Only person that would stop Jordan today would be Michael Jordan. So, I'm just saying, folks. Like, we got to cut this crap out with the LeBron versus Michael. I thought this conversation was over 10 years ago. Just because LeBron played longer, that doesn't mean he's going to be... He's the GOAT. He passed Kareem. Good for him. I mean, Kareem was the all-time leading scorer. He wasn't the GOAT in the eyes of most people. Now, some people say Kareem was the GOAT because, you know, that's some people's opinion. But I think it was definitely known that Michael Jordan was the greatest of all time when Le- when Jordan retired. So, are we? was it LeBron versus Kareem or is it LeBron versus Michael? Because versus Michael, he's not close. And I can make the case that LeBron's not even the best small forward in NBA history, but I'll leave that for another discussion for another time. Okay? So, that's it, folks. Let us know what you think about that in the comments. And don't forget to follow me on uh, Hoopsteady. Not me, but us. Sports fans. One of our sports fans. 